Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Electrical Concepts. My name is Avigyan Roy. So in this video lecture, we'll discuss about single ended primary inductor converter or we call it SEPIC, S-E-P-I-C. It is also one kind of DC to DC converter. In my previous video lecture, I discussed the Chuck converter. So this time we'll discuss about SEPIC. So as you can see, SEPIC performs both step up and step down of output voltage like bug boost converter or like a Chuck converter. But still there, there are some differences uh, with Chuck converter and also with bug boost converter. We'll see that gradually. So average output voltage is same as bug, bug boost converter and also same as Chuck converter that is V0 or VO is equal to D by 1 minus D into Vs. Okay, so this is the circuit diagram of a SEPIC. Vs is the input supply voltage, VO is the output voltage. Okay. So, see the first advantage of SEPIC is polarity inversion of output voltage is not present unlike bug boost converter. As we have seen in Chuck converter also the polarity inversion takes place. Okay, and that makes, uh, that actually creates uh, circuit complexity. Okay, because you will also need some additional circuit to again reverse the polarity and make it conventional. But in that case, that in polarity inversion problem is not there so circuit complexity is reduced so this is one advantage and also unlike bug boost converter presence of input side inductor reduces the input input current ripple so if you compare this con uh, converter with bug boost uh, you will get to see that due to the presence of input inductor in SEPIC the input current ripple gets reduced Okay, but such arrangement is not present in bug boost converter. Okay, so this is how it is advantages over, over bug boost converter. So this is the overall view of sing, uh, single ended primary inductor converter. Now let's move to its working principle. So suppose this is the on case and this is the off case. So before going further, you need to know that for the very first time when switch is closed, only L1 is charged that means when the switch is closed for the very first time only L1 will be charged because rest of the portions uh, have no power flow okay for the very first time and when switch is open C1 and C2 are charged okay see the moment C a switch is open uh, see here when the moment switch is open what will happen the charged inductor will now start discharging and it will maintain the current in same direction so by doing this process both input supply and L1 will charge capacitor C1 and also capacitor C2 okay the circuit will power flow will take place like this for the uh, very first time when the switch is open now let's see what happens next see after that again when you close the switch L1 will automatically be charged as you can see here and this time C1 will, will be discharged okay because initially C1 has uh, initially C1 had some charge across uh, itself right and C1 will not change its polarity so uh, in this fashion it will discharge and as you can see by discharging it actually charges the inductor L2 alright and C2 is discharged, discharged across load we also saw that C2 was charged for the very first time and now C2 will discharge through load okay so that will happen so after the turn off that means when the switch is off what will happen C1 is charged again see here C1 will be charged by both input supply and inductor L1 this L1 will, will, will be discharging now so by doing by this process C1 will be charged and also the power will be supplied to the load. Not only that L2 is discharged through diode and supplies power to the load. Okay. See here. Initially L2 had some current which was flowing in that direction. So it will maintain the same direction and this is how through diode L2 will discharge and supply the power to the load. So this is the overall working principle of SEPIC. 
or single ended primary inductor converter i hope you have liked this video please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching good day.